So when we think about the very birth of Chinese contemporary art, it's very much linked to uh, ideas of freedom, uh, either ideas of freedom of expression or even ideas of um, what it meant to do things in the public sphere. Now, I say this very tentatively because when I was doing a lot of research on Chinese contemporary art about a decade ago, so many of the mid-career generation of artists like Xu Bing and Zai Guochang said that really to understand their work, you had to go earlier to the Cultural Revolution. You know, it really d does divide itself up into three very neat decades, meaning from 79 to 89, you have these bookends, 79, open door policy, 1989, June 4th, Tiananmen, the 1990s, which was an internationalization period, that's bookended by 2000 when China opens up to, the, to become part of the WTO, and then the market in 2005. So you see very clearly that there are three distinct decades and kind of movements that go on with those decades. I mentioned our Inside Out show. So I think that this was a, um, something of a turning point too here in the United States in terms of people's recognition that there was indeed an art scene in China. I know we find it hard to believe today, but in the preparations for that exhibition in 1998, there were people who said to us here at Asia Study that there was, they wondered whether in fact there was an art scene in China. Well, today, of course, now we know there very much was. One of the other big movements that happened in the 1990s probably as res a response to the fact that there were so many museum shows outside of China, was that some collectors also started to um, assemble important collections of Chinese contemporary art. The trouble was that they were all outside of China. And this, I think, is one of the most unusual characteristics of the Chinese contemporary art world or the Chinese art world in general. And that is that you had a situation where the major exhibitions and the major collections were all happening outside of the country. I don't think that's ever happened anywhere else before because in most places, if you even look at the Indian example, or even here in the US, you would say that um, support always comes from home. Right? If you look at Indian contemporary art, majority of collectors are either of Indian descent, NRIs, non-resident Indians, we call them, or in home country in India. In China in the 1990s, you had this very strange disconnect where collectors like um, Guy Lenz and Uli Sig were, actually had major collections that, um, that could not be compared with anything inside China. And so one of the responses that um, Baron Guy Lenz had was to build a center for contemporary art in Beijing, which he finished in 2007. Um, his idea was that he would have his collection on display. However, I think it has actually turned into more of a contemporary art center and is located at 798 for those of you who have visited. But I think that again, in a way it was strange because this was one of the first contemporary art museums in China and it had been founded by a foreigner. If we were to talk about other trends going on in China today, I would have to say that one of the biggest growth sectors, apart from collecting, is also in museums. So there are many new private museums or plans for private museums. This is an image of Minsheng Museum, which is founded by Minsheng Bank. So it's very much a private museum. It's been very aggressive in collecting Chinese contemporary art. They, in fact, held this 30 years of the development of Chinese contemporary art. So there's a, an attempt also from the museum to start to historicize Chinese contemporary art, which hadn't really happened before in China. So I think that this is a new effort. The other big effort is, of course, on the government side of things. And some of you might be familiar with the um, government announcement some years ago that they plan to build a thousand new museums in China. Um, Although some people might be skeptical about this number, there are certainly plans to build museums at every provincial level. And some of them, um, some of them include antiquities that have been from archaeological discoveries. 
Some of them combine modern contemporary art. But if we were to take physical museum infrastructure building at its, at its face value, there are an awful lot being built right now. And in addition to that, there will have to be collections formed, right?